Hello everyone, and welcome back to another Inch 130 video tutorial. So we're going to continue on with support reactions, but in this time we're going to talk about a cantilever beam. Now what a cantilever beam is, is a beam that's only supported kind of on one end and hangs out for a good span. And the reason why they're so uh, much fun, I guess that would be the best word, is to create that large span, we're going to want to restrict the rotation at one end. So usually for a cantilever beam, one end is fixed. And so that's kind of what we're going to get talk about today is a fixed connection, a fixed support connection or support reaction. As we discussed last time is uh, fixed connections are a little bit different than pins because they also provide that rotational resistance. So there's actually a support moment. So I think it'd be best to solve for that, show you guys how to solve for that because it's actually a very common case you guys can see in the lab or in a final exam. So, uh, not a whole lot to talk about. I think it's best if we just get into the example. You guys can see how much fun it is and uh, we can go from there. All right, so let's begin. Alrighty, so looking at this example, it would like us to determine the components of the support reactions at the fixed support A on the cantilevered beam. So it's kind of like what I said before. We have a cantilevered beam. It's a fixed support at one end, so we're going to have to account for those support conditions. But the basics is just like any other question, we're just going to want to solve for all the unknowns. And as you guys will see, uh, fixed support, even though it sounds a little bit scarier than a simple supported beam, it's actually much, much easier. And uh, I'm hoping that you guys will see why as we go through this example. But remember, the first thing for these type of examples is always going to be free body diagrams. It's going to become a very, very important step into solving all these problems. So let's start by creating a free body diagram. So the first thing I want to do is I just want to kind of create the beam. So I'm not very good at this. So on the iPad, so let's just try and create maybe two rectangles and I can join them up or something like that. So let's just see how this goes. Okay. So you're able to do that. Can I move this? Ah, all right. So that's my beam. So of course you guys will be able to draw better because you guys are much better artists than I am, but this is going to be my beautiful beam. So now we can start putting our loads on it, our forces, stuff like that. So we see that the one right off the bat, we have a six kilonewton vertical load around there. So we're just going to put the load there. We're going to be six kilonewtons. And we see that we also have another kind of angled load coming out like this. So these are the ones that are given. These are the external loads. And this one's going to be 4 kilonewtons. So those are the external loads. But then remember, we also have to include the loads from the support reaction. So remember what we said. If it's a fixed beam, it's going to have the same type of loads as a pin, where we have a vertical and a horizontal. So there's my vertical. And I'm going to throw in the horizontal. And again, my I always assume it's positive. It may not be correct, but that's completely fine. I assume it's positive. So this one's going to be a y a x and finally remember to resist the rotation in the beam there's also going to be a support moment so something like this and when i put this is i just put m a so a moment at a so we now have all our forces on but remember another very important step in this is always dimensioning the beam so we know that from we got here to here and this is going to be scaled so badly but that's fine remember it's not, not about scale, even though this looks terrible. 1.5 meters. And the second one's also 1.5 meters. We know that the length of this beam going up, like this, is 1.5 meters. And as you guys will quickly see, is this will become more of a trigonometry problem than anything else. Uh, we know that this angle is 30 degrees. And we're also given that this angle is 30 degrees. So we check, we got our beam, we have our support reactions, we have our external forces, and we have all the geometry of the beam. So this free body diagram would be correct. So the best way to start, and I'll show you guys why, or actually, I'm not show you guys why, you guys can probably already see, is instead of starting off with a moment, let's start off with some of the forces in X and Y. So if I were to go some of the forces in X is equal to zero, so nothing bad. I see that I have AX, which I assumed was positive, so we're going to have positive AX. And if we look, the 6 kilonewtons doesn't have a horizontal component, but the 4 kilonewtons does. And the 4 kilonewtons also goes in the right direction, so it's going to be positive. So plus the 4 kilonewtons 
and that's the total force. Remember, we only want the horizontal force. So to do that, we're going to multiply it by cosine of 30 to get its components. And since it's in equilibrium, it must equal 0. So what happens is when I solve this right here, I get AX is going to be equal to negative 3.46. And of course, this will be kilonewtons. But then you go, okay, well, it's negative. Is my answer wrong? No, it is not wrong. The magnitude is 3.46 kilonewtons. So AX is going to be equal to 3.46 kilonewtons. But the only thing that would be assumed incorrect would just be my uh, direction. I assumed incorrectly. And that's perfectly fine. You guys don't always have to assume correctly. You will not get any marks taken off. It's perfectly fine to assume incorrectly as long as you correct it at the end. So I put my AX as 3.46 kilonewtons. In my free body diagram, I have it pointing to the right. But since I got a negative number, I know that it's actually pointing to the left. So I'm going to put a little arrow to indicate that sense. And then I can box my answer. And that is not a box. All right, let's try again. Round two. All right, that is more like a box. Perfect. So from there, let's go sum of the forces in y equals 0. Sum of the forces in y equals 0. And it's going to be very similar to before, where we have ay going up. So ay. And we have minus 6 kilonewtons because we have that concentrated load of 6 kilonewtons going down. And we also have the 4 going downwards, so minus 4. But remember, we only want that vertical component. So we're going to multiply that one by the sine of 30. So sine of 30. Everything's in equilibrium, so we know this is all equal to 0. By solving it real quick, we get Ay is going to be equal to 8 kilonewtons. And this was a positive answer, so it means that the direction I assumed was actually correct, and I assumed it going upwards, so we know that this 8 kilonewtons is actually going upwards. So, nice and easy. And now, by this point, I hope you guys see why cantilevers can actually be really, really nice. Oh, I guess that worked. Perfect. Uh, a little bit better. It's because... If you guys look at the unknown forces, we have one in the x direction, one in the y direction, and one in the moment direction. So all our unknown forces are in different equilibrium equations. We can start with any equation we want and solve for variable right away. We don't have to, like for the simply supported beam, we can't go right to the sum of forces in y because we have two unknowns. For the cantilever, however, as you guys see, there's only one unknown in each equation. So it's just like bang, 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 get them done really fast. Cantilevers are very, very nice. Now this question does become a bit of a pain in the butt, but it's not really because of the cantilevers. You guys will see it's the moments because we're going to need that perpendicular distance moment. It's not that much fun. So let's do some of the moments. So now you're going to ask, oops, I don't want this in red. Some of the moments. And now is equal to zero. But now we got to figure out which point we take it at. Because it doesn't matter which point we have, we're only going to have the one unknown, which is ma. So if I were to take the sum of the moments, and I'm going to do this in purple, let's say on the very right side of the beam at this point right here, get rid of that 4 kilonewtons. I can absolutely do that. That is not a problem at all. However, I don't recommend it. And here's why. If I'm taking the moments at that point, I have to consider the moments created by ay and ax which is no big deal because I have AY and AX, they're right there. But here's the, kind of the, the kicker. If I were to have gotten one of those answers wrong, let's say I got AX wrong, then my A, uh, sorry, then my sum of the moment equation will be wrong. So it's better to take the sum of the moments at the point where all the forces are, so at this point on the left side of the beam, at point A, because all the moments will be created by known forces. Forces, you know that's six kilonewtons. You know the other one's four kilonewtons. There's no, if you get it wrong, then it's just another calculation error. But if you make an error before, it won't come back to bite you. So best thing to do is we take the sum of the moments at point A. So there's kind of a little trick to this too, but we're going to kind of forget about it to the end. So let's start with the six kilonewtons. So we have six kilonewtons. We know that it acts at a distance of 1.5 meters. And if we look and we're taking the moments about A and we were to hold our pencil at A, push down on the pencil where the six would be, we see it starts to have that clockwise rotation. 
So this one's going to be a negative. And if we look up, we got some. Uh, we got the four kilonewtons, and now this is where it gets kind of uh, kind of fun, because this four kilonewtons is actually a horizontal component like this, and a vertical component. Oops, I don't know why that went so far off, and a vertical component like this. And as you will see, since the beam is a kind of angled up, both of those will create a moment. So let's start with the vertical component first. And so we see that the vertical component of four kilonewtons is going to be 4 times the sine of 30. So I'm going to put this all in one bracket. 4 times the sine of 30. So this right here, that's just the force. Nothing to do with the distance yet. As for the distance, we see that it's going to be that 3 meters to where the beam starts to become an angle. So we're going to go 3. Plus, and then we have to consider that horizontal distance from where the beam starts to create an angle to the force. So we see it's going to be 1.5. And then we're going to have to do cosine or sine of 30 degrees. And remember, if we want that horizontal distance, we're going to want to do the cosine. So 1.5 times cosine of 30 degrees. So I know it looks very long, but basically this is what it is. It's going to be my force times my distance. And if we look at that vertical component, it's very similar to the 6 kilonewtons. Whereas we'll see, it starts to create that counter clock, uh, sorry, the clockwise rotation at A. So this will also be negative. The last thing to do, we're going to have to consider the horizontal component of the four kilonewtons. So down here, I'm going to go four. And remember, this one will be cosine of 30. So this is just the horizontal component. And then we're going to need a distance. So the distance is going to be that vertical distance from where the beam is kind of flat all the way up until where it angles. So it's going to be 1.5 times the sine of 30. Sine of 30. So the last thing we have to do, what kind of rotation does it make? So if I hold my pencil at A and I come horizontally across the top, we see it's also going to be clockwise, so it's going to be negative. So then we can go equals zero. But then you're going to go, oh, Clayton, something's wrong. We have equals zero, but there's actually no unknowns in this equation. And this is the most common thing that will happen in the lab. Trust me, this would be the most common thing. So when you have a, a moment, so in this case, I have a moment at A. That moment has to be included in any sum of the moments calculations. So this equation right here, it's actually wrong. What we'd have to include in it is plus ma and the only reason why i put plus is because if i look at my free body diagram i assumed it to be going counterclockwise which is positive i could have assumed the other way and put negative perfectly fine but the key to this is what i'm trying to say to you guys is even if i was taking the moment at the far end of the beam on the right side i would still have to include that ma if there's any concentrated moment it always has to be included in any any sum of the moments equations so Here's my equations. I have one unknown, one equation. I can solve and I'll get MA is equal to 20.2. And the units will be kilonewton meters. And then my direction was assumed correctly because I got a positive answer. And we see that it's actually counterclockwise. So I'm just going to put a little counterclockwise arrow. Box it since it's the final answer. Perfect. And that's that. So those are my three equations. So again, how to solve a fixed uh, support. We just have to make sure that we include that reaction moment that it has, that MA. But the nice thing, as we saw, all of our equilibrium equations always only have one unknown. So it's very easy just to go through them and pick them apart and easily find our unknowns in any order. The other trick would be, where do I take the moments at? Well, I highly recommend you take it at the support. Because in case you get AX or AY wrong, you'll be covered. And you can still get the moment correctly even though you got those wrong. So that concludes this example. In the next example, we're going to get into what the students tend to hate the most. And that's when we put things at angles. And not so much the beam like in this case, or the part of the beam in this case. I'm talking about uh, distributed load at an angle. Or one of the rollers of a support could be at an angle. Stuff like that. So... Uh, I hope you stick around and thank you guys so much for watching this video. I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.